ADHD family. I'm Yakini coming to you from ADHD Love. And today I have another episode of ADHD Love Parent Talk. And I'm very excited to have Brian on the show. You may know him from ADHD Lullaby. I just want to welcome Brian. I am so excited to have you here. So how are you doing, Brian? I am very well. Great. Thank you for coming. And so please tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Um, and then talk about why do you know ADHD so well? Well, I, I, I wouldn't profess myself as being an expert by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> um, I came to understand it very, very uniquely. Um, and my story is a very interesting one. Uh, I'm a deputy sheriff here in the Phoenix area. And one of the things uh, that, a, something that occurred to me uh, four years ago, in 2016, I was working and uh, I had made a traffic stop in the Tempe area of Phoenix, if you're familiar with it. And I, I got into a shooting and was shot in the line of duty. Mm. And um, I'm fine. I, I may not run as fast as I used to, but uh, <laughs> during that period of recovery, uh, my wife came to me and said, hey, uh, you're not going to sit around and play PlayStation for the next three or four months until you go back to work. <laughs> and, you know, she said the magical words to me, which kind of will get any guy moving. She said, you know, guys that play guitar are sexy. <laughs> I love it. Right. Love it. So, so, you know, I bought a guitar and uh, started taking some lessons and uh, it, I, you know, that ADHD side of me just, it turned absolutely obsessive. And so all the while, though, um, we had a son, we had, have, he didn't go away. I was about to say, you already moved him out. <laughs> yeah, so he goes to college, it'll be a good one. Um, he has a, a fairly good case of ADHD and uh, took a, a drug called Concerta for a long time. He's on to a different medication for it now. And as a result, that drug caused him problems getting to sleep at night. And so one night, well, I mean, when I say problems getting to sleep at night, I don't mean like, you know, 10 minutes. I mean, we're talking hours, right? My wife or I would have to sit in his room and make sure he stayed in bed with his eyes closed or he'd get up and get water, go get a bathroom, go get, you know, play with Legos. And it was a constant battle. And so one night, uh, just because I was sick of sitting in his room doing nothing and twiddling my thumbs, I took my guitar in and I started playing very softly. And understand at the time, I was very, very bad at guitar and I've gotten a whole lot better. But, um, you know, I was playing like a little blues melody, completely out of time, right? I was missing notes. I was skipping notes. I mean, I, I was just, well, for lack of better interest, we'll call it out and say I was just noodling around. I don't, I don't know if you play an instrument or ever played an instrument, but noodling on an instrument is a, uh, it's a professional term for somebody who's just <laughs> making it up as they go, right? right? And ironically, uh, I found him to be asleep very, very quickly. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of strange. Did it again the next night. And I was like, oh, that seemed, and it seemed to make a, an improvement. I don't want to say it was, it was a solution, but it seemed to be an improvement. Um, I have a very good friend of mine who's a psychiatrist. And uh, he, he studies sound and the human mind for the U.S. military. You know, uh, when they go into combat, you know, and they broadcast, you know, various messages, they'll, yeah. they'll embed stuff in it. And it's like psychological warfare stuff. So I called him up and I said, hey, uh, why is it that me playing my guitar helped my kid get to sleep? And, and he said something very, very profound to me. He said, you know, when, when we think about Western music, and I mean, like music, not of China and India and, and Eastern cultures, but Western music along the lineages of Mozart and Beethoven, we think about music that everything lands right on the beat, right, with a very, very pronounced method of, of, of playing. And so our mind will interpolate pattern in that music and we'll come to start to expect that pattern. Yeah. And he said, you know, when you're, when you are playing music completely out of time, not making any sense whatsoever, and just playing like the horrible guitar player you are, Brian, those were his exact words. 
He says, what you're doing is you're confusing the human mind because it's expecting pattern and it can't find it. And specifically what that interrupts is something known as the OODA loop, which stands for observe, orient, decide, and act. And every piece of information that you take into your, into your, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, or your skin through senses, you are going to go through that OODA loop process. And, and so by interrupting the OODA loop and making it go for, May, basically making it very hard to orient itself with the pattern that it expects in music, you're, you're creating a distraction for the mind and allowing right. it to not, yeah. to focus on its job at hand. And so uh, I, now this is where it gets, I think, a little more interesting. One of the things that I do in law enforcement is uh, I specifically investigate uh, impairment cases as it relates to vehicular homicide. So when drugs are involved in a, in a vehicle crash or somebody's high on say cocaine or marijuana or whatever it is, it's my job to figure out what they're impaired by, how it's impairing them, and then testify in court to that impairment. So I have a very unique understanding of drugs in the human system and the way they interact with the human system. And so when you think about a stimulant medication, this is interesting stuff. Well, at least it is to me and I geek out on this stuff. So if I bore you, tell me. No, no, you're good. We all, we all have this natural line that we like to sit at. And uh, any doctor or nurse watching will know that's called homeostasis. And so the way a stimulant medication like Concerta, which is a methylphenidate or an Adderall, Ritalin, or any of, any of the stimulant medications work, is you're going to take that homeostasis line and you're going to push bodily functions up. I should go the other way so it reads left to right. But um, when we push bodily functions up like heart rate, uh, blood pressure, we're going to dilate the pupils, certain internal things are happening. The mind does not want to be at this state up here. It wants to be at this line. And so what, what the mind then does is comes in and says, well, I'm going to pull down certain reactions to try to offset this part here to maintain this homeostasis. And so what that stimulant drug is essentially doing is it's creating an internal struggle to maintain homeostasis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and thereby that's why we get that um, normalization, if you will, of behavior. So at the end of the day though, the body still is wanting to enforce homeostasis. The drug is wearing off and the mind is still pulling down. Mm -hmm. So that's where we get that crash effect usually happens after about 12 hours with the extended release drugs that are out today. And the, at some point, the body gets low enough on that curve that it goes, whoa, this is bad. And it kicks into high gear and it dumps, I don't know what it dumps, but it's serotonin, you know, dopamine, whatever else it dumps into the, into the bloodstream to re almost jumpstart and get back above that homeostasis line so it doesn't crash and die as that's what it's really thinking. And so that's why we get that late day reaction. Mm -hmm. So working with my friend who's a, the psychiatrist, we started to experiment with taking my random horrible music that I played and putting it over rhythmic beats and say, okay, I want a beat that lands exactly on, it's very sustained. And then over the top of it, I'm going to play this out of time music. And essentially, I created this massive confusion in the mind of trying to orient itself to the music. And then buried inside of the music at a subaudible tone, at subaudible levels, we have embedded some very specific frequencies that have been used in neuroscience for decades, right? Nothing new. And those tones help the body relax and the mind to relax as well. So in essence, what we're doing is we're calming that body down after that serotonin and dopamine or whatever it was it dumped in to avoid that crash. And we're allowing it to reset its own homeostasis at a faster pace okay. than just by uh, allowing the serotonin and dopamine or whatever it dumps to wear off naturally. All the while that, that, that rhythmic and non-rhythmic musical elements are continuing to uh, overload the mind's ability to multitask. And that's where we get, we're creating an, a deep relaxation and we're taking away the stimulus of Legos, squirrel, 
you know, whatever else that ADHD mind goes through. Uh, and that is, that's the music that I created with ADHD Lullaby. We've got a, a patent pending on it. It's very, you know, this is, this is very unique stuff. And, um, you know, awesome. I, I'm happy to report to you that in February of 2019, I released that album not expecting very much of it. I'm, I'm certainly not a music label. I don't have a lot of, uh, you know, I didn't have a lot of knowledge of the, of, the, of the recording industry and how the world of music works. But I said, you know what? It helped my kid. I've sent it out to some friends of mine. It's helped their kid. You know, we've done a lot of work on this, the psychiatrist and I, and we said, let's just put it out there and see what happens. And, and to date, um, within about two weeks of releasing, it became the number one children's lullab new release on Amazon for children's lullabies. And uh, since then, it has maintained in the top 10 children's lullabies on Amazon for going on over two years. Yeah, well, a year and ago. a half, thereabouts. Okay. Um, it charted on Billboard for 26 weeks, which wow. is amazing. I mean, this is, this is an album which a normal person listens to and goes, that's not normal music. We know, right? It's not <laughs> There's a reason for that, right? Either. Yeah. Right? If you have ADHD, listen to this and yeah. give it a try. And realistically, it's, it's helped thousands and thousands of kids at this point. It's been streamed. I think we've had about 5 million streams between Spotify and Amazon Music and, and Apple Music. I mean, so for what it is and for not having a record label, it's done phenomenally well. Um, you know, there are outlets such as your outlet here where the word continues to spread and we continue to help more and more kids. And, and the best part about this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote Dr. Hallowell, uh, who wrote the Driven Distraction book, is this is non-pharmaceutical. Right. Right. I mean, this is not an Ambien or a sleep aid that the kid has to take in order to calm down and get some sleep at night. Now, does it work every night? No. Does it work with every kid? No. I, I wish it was a magic, you know, magic wand that I could wave and help them all, but it, it, it's not, right? But resoundingly, uh, from what we're seeing and, you know, from reviews I'm seeing and what I hear back from parents and in, in non-scientific studies of my own, about, about nine out of 10 kids in that six to 13 age range that it was recorded for, it's really helping and it's doing wonders. So that's awesome. That's, yeah. And it played a little bit for my son, um, uh, actually probably for about a week in a row while he was studying. Um, mm -hmm. as he tends to be, you know, all over the place. And you did, I did see a difference in terms of just the calming aspect. And that's why I was like, Oh, I've got to talk to him. <laughs> Because it is it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And my children are musical children. So like they, oh, okay. you know, they play, uh, I've played classical, you know, on my belly, you know, since they were in my tummy and right. they play, um, you know, my, my son plays the, the violin and my daughter plays the cello and they listen to classical music while, you know, we're studying or walking around or when I wake up um, or when they wake up. So it was really interesting just to even see the dynamics change in terms of the calming aspect when I played your music compared compared to playing what they were used to hearing. You know, it was it was just amazing. So yeah, I, I think it's amazing. I mean, I just do. You know, it's interesting that you say that your kids are are training in music and classical music and listening to it because you know the 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 non rhythmic parts of this I equate to that guy clapping out of time at church, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, if you're classically trained and you're going, you know, you're sitting here counting one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a while you're here in music, because that's what musicians end up doing, right? And you're like, wait, wait, that, 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 what, what the, you can't yeah. figure out right. what the heck is going on. And to, I have had feedback from some people that are classically trained musicians. They're like, I have no idea what I listen to and I can't make sense of it. And it drives me <laughs> But you're not supposed to. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and my response to them is, you know, look, you, you, can't, you can't think of this as music per se. It, right. It's musical, but really what it is, is it's functional sound. And right. It's, right. it's quite a bit different. So now where, where it gets interesting is, so I, I've, I've, uh, I'm working in collaboration with a guy out of Shanghai who has ADHD and we kind of found each other and he's a, 
hip hop artist of sorts. And so we're, we're coming out with a lo-fi beats version of ADHD lullaby. We're, uh, we'll see what happens with it. I don't know. It, it's, but it, it, it sounds great. It's really cool. It's a little bit of a different twist. And, you know, that our hope cool. there was that it, it would appeal to uh, people that like different genres of music. I've, you know, I'm, I've got another collaboration with a lady that's trained in piano and, you know, so we're, we're trying to reach the masses a little bit better with it because not all kids like, you know, the, the blues jazz that I do. And, you know, so who knows, we'll see, but. No, oh, that's, that's awesome. That's really cool. So I want to um, get into a little bit about, um, you know, as you learned about your son having ADHD. So first of all, what age was he diagnosed and what type? Um, you know, I think he was probably diagnosed around six. About six years old. And what type? Yeah. So we took him in. Um, he saw a psychiatrist who specifically does testing. Okay. And I don't know if we got a type diagnosis okay. as much as we got. Just kind of the a, general. A dual diagnosis of, of ADHD with anxiety. And yep. in that process too, we also, uh, she also did some um, uh, IQ testing mm -hmm. and found that, you know, he's off the charts in math and, and logic, but, and, and this is an interesting thing. She called him a, a, a 2E kid. And I don't know if you've heard that term before, but, and this is one of the, the struggles that he has is so his math and logical reasoning is way up here but his communication skills are way down here and there's this like internal struggle constantly. And so, uh, but no, I, we never got a diagnosis of inattentive or hyperactive. Um, I would probably put him more, I don't even know. It's probably, and the anxiety has its own. So it has its own bucket, but it's really interesting because I just discovered that recently um, where you have an anxiety bucket and you also have a depression and then you have the co comorbidity where there's anxiety and depression. So um, we always talk about the inattentive and hyperactivity impulsive types and there's still some things over here that, you know, we don't talk about as much. So it's kind of interesting. So once you had that diagnosis, I mean, how did you guys feel about that? I mean, was it a relief or, I mean, was it a, the start of a journey? I mean, how did you feel about that? You know, when, when he was initially diagnosed, um, I think it was relief because we now we knew what it was, right? You know, we, we couldn't quite, it really put a definition to what he had and sent us down a road of doing research, That's right? And, and, you know, the next struggle that we really ran into is there there's not a lot of mentorship out there um, that we were able to find for parents with ADHD kids. And so, you know, what I've discovered now that I've become more involved in the world of, of ADHD and ADHD awareness is that there are coaches, there are all kinds of resources out there that you have to just go look for, right? right. Now, ultimately, we were able to, to kind of latch onto another couple who had been down this road before and you know the amount of information and research that uh, she provided was amazing you know and that so that's one of the things i tell everybody is you know look if you find yourself in a position where you just don't know what to do or you need somebody to you know ask a question of or or bounce something off of somebody just just ask me i'm happy you know I, i'm you know I may not have an hour to give you but you know i i can at least send you some links and put point you in the right direction and um, it, it's, it's pretty cool world. And I'm, I'm finding that, um, the, the community is, is really, they're, they're very identifiable of each other, right? You're like, yes. yeah, I, I get it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I got, I got you, <laughs> right? What do you need? Absolutely. I got you. You know, yeah. and it's, it's weird, you know, I mean, you walk into Safeway or the grocery store and you, you know, you see mom or dad or whoever, and you got, you know, they're dealing with that kid and you're like, 
dude, that kid has ADHD. And, you know, on one level, you're like, need a little help, you know, for a second or something like that. And, you know, on the other hand, it's like, uh, right, right, exactly. You know, it's 2020 and nobody does that anymore. But, right, right. Um, but it, it's been, it's been a very cool um, eye opening thing. And, and uh, I, I think that the world is starting to open up and recognize things a little bit better. Uh, I think the medications are better today than they were five years ago. I know the medications five years ago were better than they were when I was a kid. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure you had kids in your classes that may or may not have been on Ritalin and they were in the back drooling out the side of their mouth. And, you know, that doesn't exist anymore. So, exactly. and, and I, I, I will say, I think that was probably, and I don't know if your kids, you made the decision to to use medications with your kids. It was a hard decision for us. I was initially against it, um, but it was probably the best decision we made because he's happy, he's well-adjusted, he makes friends, he gets, you know, he does pretty well in school. Um, we have struggles at night with homework when the stuff is worn off, but, you know, it, it was a good decision for us at the time and, you know. Yeah. So you talked about sleeping was one of the difficulties, uh, obviously coming down from medication and dealing with homework, but what were some other struggles um, that you had to work through as a family with him? Eating. Mm. Still do every day. Gotcha. Um, on, on, in the mornings, he, you know, I can wake up in the morning and he's, he's now 13 and he's, he's getting tall and big and, you know, growing like a, you know, kid with puberty <laughs> does, you know, but I'll make him four eggs in the morning and, you know, five or six pieces of bacon, he'll scarf that down and he's still hungry. And then we'll, we'll give him his medication right with his breakfast. And 20 minutes later, he's not hungry for the rest of the day. And come six o'clock at night, he's still not that hungry. So we have, uh, we have fridge raids about one in the morning. I catch him all the time at one, two. In the oh, morning. wow. Um, <laughs> He scared the bejesus out of me a couple of weeks ago at about two thirty in the morning. I smell this like burning smell, and I I'm like, what is that? I go into the kitchen and he's sitting there making you know top ramen on the stove, and I'm like, not no no not at two thirty in the morning. You you're not turning on the stove at two thirty. <laughs> I, I don't want my house burning down while we're all sleeping. You know peanut butter and jelly, dude. Come on, man. Right right yeah. You know, it's really interesting to hear you say that because I, I remember um, I'm part of some of those communities on Facebook and that's one of the primary conversations and, you know, how their child just raids the kitchen, like, like you said, one, two o'clock in the morning and just pre pretty much eats up everything. And I, I said, to your point, as long as they're not burning something, I'm probably going to even have a shelf for them. You know, <laughs> like, here you go. Here's your stash, <laughs> you yeah. know. You know, on one level, it's annoying because, yeah. you know, some days he'll wake us up and, you know, or he'll eat something that he's not supposed to. You know, we, we have to hide anything with sugar in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, we can't, there are certain things we just can't buy because, you know, as much as I like him or his brother likes him or his mom, I mean, we don't generally have soda in the house because he'll, he'll drink a 12 pack of Coke like it's nothing. I mean, he's, he's got that addiction to sugar uh, when he's not on his pill. And, and I, I think that's kind of a, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's probably a placeholder for his medication on days he's, when his medication's worn off and his mm -hmm. body somehow knows it. I, that I don't know, but anything with sugar, we have to hide cakes, cookies. Oh yeah. I can see know. that. So he, the fortunate side is, you know, he, he likes other things too. And, you know, so he'll, but, you know, he'll eat an entire block of cheese. <laughs> I mean, stuff's not cheap, right? You know, what's, what's a block of cheese, a pound of cheese, what, eight, $10? Yeah. I mean, it's gone Easily. one night. Like, you don't have a job. <laughs> oh, that is too funny. So what so. tips do you have for parents? So parents who just discovered that their child has ADHD, they're just about to start that path. They don't know what to do. Just what are your, some of your tips for them? You're not alone, right? And you're not a bad parent and it's okay for you to get frustrated. 
right? Um, it's, you know, every, everybody finds and figures out their way of dealing with it. You'll figure out yours. Uh, you know, you're going to feel like a bad parent some days. Don't, right? Trust me, the kid loves you no matter what. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the stuff you have to remember. You know, it's interesting you asked that question. And let me see if I can find it really quick. Um, if you go onto my website, which is ADHDlullaby.com, and you go under the blog, I did something very interesting years ago, and I got to find it, is I posted the question on Facebook of, you know, to parents, what's the one thing you wish you had known? And I, so here it is, it was posted April 18th, 2019. And I said, what is your number one tip for a parent of a new, of a new diagnosed ADHD child? Yeah. I got 277 responses and I posted every one of them. Nice, nice. So, I mean, everything from routine is key to lots and lots of wine. Uh, <laughs> stay strong, consistent in wine, right? You know, um, think before you react. Don't be ashamed of your child. I mean, you know, it's a great, you know, and I, I will tell you that those 277 tips are not my tips. These all came from other parents. Uh, I think the only one, there's a couple tips in there that might be mine, you know, like, hey, try ADHD lullaby. I mean, that's, you know, I got to put that in there, right? But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's. No, that's good. That's good. That, and was, that's a, that was probably one of the, yeah, it's under the blog things. Um, there's some great, uh, there's some great books in there. Um, one person even wrote, remember Albert Einstein had ADHD, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit more, anything else you want to share about ADHD Lullaby? And you said, where could they pick it up from? You talked about Amazon and. Um, it is everywhere. So okay. um, I think the majority of people in the United States now, uh, they consume music via Spotify or yeah. Apple Music or Amazon Music. It's up on all of those. These are title, you name it, it's up on it. Um, if they're in other countries, it's in Russia, China, Japan, uh, all over the Middle East, India, uh, the, for what's the name of the streaming, Ngami, which is the streaming service for like all of Africa. It's on there. I, I, I get, I had some dude email me the other day from South Africa and was like, and like, I'm interpolating this like South African accent. It was like, hey, brew, like, you know, whatever they call <laughs> Like it was like it was I'm like it's like thanks for doing this this is awesome I'm like it's cool stuff That's nice so I, I've gotten uh, I've gotten messages from all over the world but in the United States it's on all of those places uh, okay. it's also up if you don't have access to any of that uh, it's up on YouTube so uh, you can you can search for ADHD Lullaby full album and the entire album is on YouTube in one sitting. Um, if you are old school and still have a rotary phone and a CD player, uh, you can order a, a, a CD through Amazon or my website. Um, but yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Cool. That's awesome. So any last minute tips, any last minute thoughts for parents that you, that we may have not touched on? Um, anything you want to share? Yeah. Um, the, the one thing I will say is that every, you know, every child is different. And, you know, we, in terms of, of finding that thing to help my kids sleep, you know, we went through weighted blankets. We went through, we put little stars on the ceilings that glowed at night. You know, we tried pink noise. We tried white noise. We tried baby Mozart. Heck, I even put guns and roses on one night just to see <laughs> what happened. Um, you know, you've, you've got to, you've got to find the thing that works for your kid. If it's ADHD lullaby, great. If you try it and it doesn't work, I'm going to tell you you're one step closer to finding something that does for your kid. There's some magical combination out there that will help your kid get to sleep. And um, that's the cool thing. And then always, I would, I would say, don't, don't be shy. If you, if you need help from somebody or you just need a piece of advice or you're curious how I handle the situation, send me an email. I respond to everybody on, on all my social media. I'm sure you do the same. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'll talk to anybody. So don't, uh, don't, don't think of me as some celebrity by any stretch of the imagination because I'm not. So just. And can you remind them what is your handle on Instagram and your website address? So my handle on Facebook and uh, Instagram is just ADHD lullaby, just like it sounds. Uh, on YouTube, you would find me under Brian Wisda. So that's Brian with a Y and Wisda is spelled W-I-S-D-A. But if you type in ADHD lullaby, I guarantee you'll find me. Um, and then the website is just ADHDlullaby.com. And for the last question, is there any resources that you can share? So you talked about um, one book, but any other books or YouTube channels or anything that the parents can use to do some research? Yeah, so there's a, there's a, there's a blogger out there. Her name is Lacey Estelle. Um, she writes a blog called Mothering the Storm. Um, I think she's really good because not only does she have an ADHD kid, but she's ADHD herself and she's a single mom. So she writes it from the perspective of somebody juggling all of it. Um, you know, she posted a video a couple days ago and, and I'm fortunate my wife and I are, we've been together for 15, going on, right. going on 16 years. I got to do the math, right? <laughs> Um, but you know, she, she posted something like, Hey, how to handle a toxic ex spouse with a, when you have ADHD yourself, right. You know, talks about losing her car keys and, you know, she's got the little tips of, and, and she is really ADHD. I mean, like she's, you know, right. She needs the little token on her keychain to figure out where her keys are. You know, uh, she's a good one. I like her. It's her blog is mothering the storm with Lacey Estelle. Uh, she's a good one. Um, one of the most popular uh, YouTube channels out there is one uh, called How to ADHD, and I think she's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there's a, a author. Her name is, I think it's Caitlin, and the last name is Mabry, M-A-B-R-Y. Um, and she wrote a book called um, So, I, let me see what it is. I'm pretty sure it's So I Have ADHD. Um, hi, it's me. I have ADHD by Caitlin Mabry. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's probably 10 bucks, maybe 15, but it's written for like a four or five year old who's just been diagnosed and just kind of helps them figure out what, what, what they've just been told that they have means. And it's, it's nice. It's pictorial. It's like reading a Dr. Seuss book. It's just, you know, pretty simple stuff. So there's some cool people out there and, um, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I like that today because, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't talk about ADHD. I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> so to have all this information today, it's just, it's exciting. It's it really and exciting. It's it's and not just home. information, positive information. Yeah, and it makes, well, it makes being a parent a little easier. I mean, you know, we didn't have Google back. I mean, when I was a kid, our parents didn't have Google. They had to figure it out, you know. Right. And Dr. Spock didn't know either, you know. <laughs> right. Right? That's exactly right. <laughs> so um, don't, just Google stuff and look it up and, you know, it's all, it's all a journey. That's all I can say. So. So Brian, thank you so much. I thank you for your time. I mean, it's just been really educational and wonderful. I'm very excited about ADHD lullaby. That's just the coolest thing ever. Um, and like I said, personally, uh, you know, he enjoyed it too. So I'm just very excited for you. Very cool. Well, all right. So I just wanted to close on that. So thank you again for your time and I will definitely connect with you later. Absolutely. Please reach out to me anytime you want. Thank you. Take care. You got it. Bye-bye. Have a good day.